If there is one thing that I miss about the SAD diet, it is Italian sausage. So I made a plant-based version. This sausage is made from vital wheat gluten, which is essentially the gluten or the protein from wheat flour. So if you have a gluten sensitivity, this might not be the recipe for you. But for the rest of us, if you're not gluten sensitive at all, gluten's actually good for you. We'll be making this in two parts, one wet, one dry. This recipe makes four sausage links, but you can scale it to make more or less as desired. For the wet, I'll be using my mini blender. I'm going to add six cloves of garlic. Feel free to use a little bit more if you really want to. It's sausage, make it your way. One quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. That is there to take the sometimes odd flavor away from the vital wheat gluten two tablespoons onion powder. I normally call for half of a bell pepper and I use a red one. Today, I didn't have any bell peppers, but I have these cute little mini bell peppers. So I'm just gonna break up a few of those, roughly equivalent to a half of a large red bell pepper and throw them right in. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of white miso paste. Now this is an interesting ingredient because it adds a saltiness and an umami that I think the sausage really, really needs. Now, a lot of people get freaked out about using miso because it is very salty. However, it's actually known to lower blood pressure, not raise it. And last but not least, we need a little bit of liquid to lubricate things and get it going. Three quarters of a cup of water. And that just about fills my mini blender. Pop the lid on and now we blend. I'm not looking for pure li liquefaction here. I just want, uh, you know, more or less a paste. It's gonna be pretty loose because there's a lot of water in there. That's intentional. And there we have our wet ingredients. Set that to the side for a moment. For the dry part, you wanna get a large mixing bowl and I have one cup of vital wheat gluten added. Now this is just gluten flour, okay? It's wheat flour that has the starches and carbohydrates removed, so all you have is the proteins. It's very, very, very low fat, very low carbs, and very high in protein. To this, we're going to add one quarter cup of chickpea flour. Now, you can use other kinds of flours if you want to. I just like chickpea flour. One tablespoon of red pepper flakes. These are optional, but you know, I'm making a hot sausage. So to me, they are not an option, they are mandatory. Two tablespoons of dried thyme. Now, if you have to use fresh, you're gonna need a lot more. I suggest using dry for this, but as I always say, you can never have enough thyme. Two tablespoons of dried basil. Again, I use dried ingredients for this all the time because it's just so much easier. Two tablespoons dried oregano. One teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. And one thing that really gives this that Italian sausage flavor is two tablespoons of fennel seeds. Now these have been toasted in a dry pan, you know, just on medium heat until you start to smell them and you see a little wisps of smoke. Now we just wanna give this a good mix, get all those dry ingredients incorporated together so you don't get like, you know, 15 fennel seeds and nothing else in one bite. If it seems like a lot of seasoning and a lot of herbs and spices, you gotta remember, the wheat gluten itself doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. It's not like when you're working with a, a true pork-based sausage or something like that, that already has a lot of flavor and a lot of fat. This is very low fat and doesn't really have a lot of flavor of its own, so we have to add all those flavors in. That's the secret to making a lot of these vegan and vegetarian style meat-like products. Next, we're gonna add our wet ingredients in. Just try to get it all in there. I'm just going to mix this through. It should start to sort of come together into a dough. At a certain point, you just gotta use your hands. Once you get it into a dough, you wanna knead this for a full 10 minutes. The kneading process is really important for seitan because it helps to develop the texture, so that way it won't be more like a bread consistency. It'll actually feel more meat-like and have strands. What we want to do is develop that gluten with the kneading process. So I'm just going to get it all up out of the bowl. I see, and there we go. It's looking pretty good so far. And get it out onto my board and knead it. And you can see we have some chunks of those peppers and the pepper flake and things like that. That's why I don't like to obliterate that stuff and liquefy it too much. I wanna have, you know, some nice little chunks in there, give a little breakup of the texture as well as it gives a better appearance. The dough should feel 
moist, okay, not wet. It should feel moist. If it feels too dry, you can add, you know, a little bit of water at a time, just like a half a teaspoon at a time. If it feels super, super dry, as in it won't even come together, like see how this is actually really nice already? If it won't even come together, you can add just, you know, like I say, a teaspoon or so of the vital wheat gluten at a time until you get it to where you need it to be. But I've actually tested this recipe a few times and it's worked really, really well with this amount. After our 10 minutes is up, we have a nice solid dough. I'm just gonna put that back in the bowl for a moment and put it to the side. Now, what we wanna do is prepare our sausage making casing, if you will. I'm just gonna take a piece of parchment paper here, and fold it in half. The exact size isn't super critical, but you know, you want it to be roughly sausage in length plus a little bit. So something like that should work. And I'm gonna tear that in half. Can you cut it? Of course you can, but you know, I like making things hard on myself while I'm making videos. You should end up with four relatively large sheets of parchment paper. These are like six, seven inches or so square. And there we go, four pieces, put them to the side. And then we want roughly the same thing in tin foil. So I just have the two pieces cut off so far. I'll just fold that in half and Tear it in half. And there we have it. Four pieces of tinfoil, four pieces of parchment to the side. Now we're gonna get our seitan out again and I wanna cut this into four roughly equal pieces. Don't have to be exactly perfect, but you know, close enough is close enough. Yeah, they're not all that equal, it's okay. Grab one of those along with a piece of tinfoil and a piece of our parchment. Make this into a roughly sausage shape, something like that. And then I'm gonna take the parchment, roll it over it just a little bit. This is where I like to use a dough scraper. Just stick it right on the edge like that and pull towards me. Makes a very nice tight roll of that sausage. And if you're careful, you can get it to be pretty even. I'm gonna roll that up. You want it nice and tight. Twist the edges. There's our sausage. Then we take that same roll, put it into the tin foil, and I just do a little bit with the tin foil too, just to keep it super tight. Just a little push. And roll that up. Twist up the edges. Ready for cooking. Let me repeat that on the other three. Be back with you in a minute. There we have our four sausages ready to be cooked. To cook these, I use my Instant Pot and I just use the steamer basket that it came with and I just kind of bend the edges around like this so that they all fit nicely in there. Put about an inch of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot and let that cook on pressure for about 45 minutes. If you do not have an Instant Pot or don't want to use it, you could just use a steamer basket or any way that you would steam something, but this time you have to go for about 90 minutes. It does take quite a while. That helps with the texture formation. Okay, once the 45 minutes is up, we want to let that sit for about 15 minutes and then release pressure on the Instant Pot. Probably not much left. And of course we remove our sausages carefully because they're hot. And this is where I'm supposed to say, let them cool so that they can be handled but I'm impatient and I'm making a video, so I'm just going to do it. Um, you will see some weird discoloration from the tin foil. That is one of the reasons why I don't like to just have them in tin foil, but it is just something on the surface. It's just a reaction of the aluminum with the water and things like that. So because I am impatient, I put on my gloves. And I'm just going to unwrap this as best I can. It's hard to do in gloves. And there we have our Italian sausage. Looks pretty good, texture feels nice and firm. Cut off a little piece. Oh, yeah, look at that texture, that looks fantastic. You can see all the little bits in there, that's what we wanted to see. So here is our sausage, and like any good, you know, YouTube cooking recipe, I have to give it a taste, right? Right off the bat, it has the right texture. Texture alone can make or break something like this. If the texture isn't right, if it's too chewy or not chewy enough, it's just not going to work. 
In this case, there's no fat in this, not a lot of fat. So it doesn't have that really greasy feel that sausages can have. I tend to put these in sauces and things like that, so it works really, really well. You can fry that up in a pan with a little bit of olive oil if you want to. I tend to avoid the excess fat, but that will give it a lot more of that kind of sausagey feel. Storage options. You can put these in a zip top bag or a container, keep them in the fridge for about a week. Beyond that, mm, I don't know that I'd go too much further. Or you can put them into the deep freeze, just wrap them up and throw them in the freezer and they'll keep relatively indefinitely. Just defrost it before you want to use it, throw them into something and heat them up. They are already cooked. That is important. You don't have to actually cook them further. However, if you want to brown the outsides of them, feel free. Just know that if you soak them in something for a long time, like if you put it into a soup or a stew for a very long time, they can start to get just a little tiny bit spongy. So I tend to put them in towards the end. That way they don't get overheated. But I want to have another piece. I want to try this again. Yeah, the flavors in this are really incredible. It's got a little bit of heat. I mean, it's not spicy by any means. Mm. But I'm getting the toasted fennel coming through, all those herbs and spices coming through. It's just really wonderful. And as you can see, it's got give and spring. It's not uber bouncy, but it definitely has that sausage-like texture. It's just really, really good. We've tried several from the store that tried to replicate an Italian sausage, and they were always okay. They fell a little bit short. They might have had the flavor, but they didn't have the texture. They had texture, but they didn't have the flavor. This one has both. So quite proud of this one, and I think you'll really enjoy it. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching, and have a great day. If there is one thing I miss from switching from, if there is one thing I miss about the sad diet, that's the standard American diet, and that's way too long, and uh, no, if there is one thing that I miss about the sad diet, it is Italian sausage.